Yo, yo, it's your boy H2O. Welcome back to another episode of the New Balance Podcast. Oh man, it's so good to be back with you family. I have missed you so, so much. And as always, I want to shout you out. Um, there's no New Balance Podcast without you. Um, you guys are so faithful. Um, and you know, we've been through a little something, something, but um, as we always say, man, we're going to rise to the top out of all of it. Um, This series, Living Inside of What's Inside of You, has been, um, I don't even know what word to to Mm. attach to it. I can say incredible, phenomenal, mind-blowing. It's been life-changing. It's been all of those things. Um, More importantly, for me, um, the relationships um, that God has given me and attached me to, those Those are ones that mean so much to me. And I believe I'm lost in episodes, but I believe this is episode number 11, 10, 11, somewhere in there. (laughs) Um, But once it's all said and done, hopefully you can go back and watch it and um, hear the sentence that God has spoken to us. So um, I don't want to waste any more time. Just like all of the rest of these phenomenal series episodes, I have a a phenomenal guest in studio um, today, um, and she is no stranger to the New Balance podcast. Um, If you go back to earlier, um, she and I, we spent some time together talking about some heartfelt things. But today, New Balance podcast, show some love for my sister, Ms. Jacqueline Brown. JB, what's up, sis? What's up? What's up? Thank you so much for having me again on the podcast. And hello to all of the viewers and and the family and the subscribers. Um, Today is going to be a a blessing. Yes, it is. Oh, definitely that. Yeah, we we wouldn't. I wouldn't have it no other way. And um, it's been a little while since um, we've been on. And Mm -hmm. so many things have happened. So many things have changed. But this particular topic, um, living inside of what's living inside of you, um, I thought it very, very important to to pour into and to push people to live inside of what's living inside of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've been talking about off and on the whole year, this year, how the pandemic has shifted things in so many ways. And one of the ways the pandemic has affected us is um, we understand some things will never go back to being the same. And with that, with that idea, with that thought, there are so many people trying to figure out what's next. And part of what's next for so many of us it is the opportunity to believe and to step out on faith, to live inside of what's living inside of you. Now, For many of us, that's going to look different. It's going to be a myriad of things. Mm -hmm. But the key is for you to find your it, find out what is living on the inside of you. Because there is something living on the inside of you. If you if you're taking, if you're inhaling, exhaling, there's something on the inside of you that you yourself didn't put there, but God put it there. And there are many ways to find out. Um, how, but this series is really, I didn't really focus on um, how to find out. I really am focusing on you stepping out in it. Um, we so Harry, I yes. have a question. So how did you come up with that? Like what, what, what was like your, your mindset when you thought about that? That's a great question. Um, I, I, I was asked that question again. So one of the things I, I thought um, when doing the New Balance podcast, um, obviously I want to have on an array of different minds, mindset of different people, but we all come from a like precious faith type thing. So one of the things I understand for us that's important is life has a rhythm and we know there are times the rhythm of life it can be broken but like anything you can restart it and get back into a rhythm but many times 
when you talk about life being a rhythm, there are so many people that have not even gotten into the rhythm of life. They are sitting on the sideline and they're waiting, right? So I was doing this podcast with my cousin mm-hmm. and, he, and, he, and I, he and I have been working on some things off. Obviously we hadn't talked about it publicly, but we're okay. working on some things and um, to get him to do a podcast and he's watching, to get him to do a podcast was like pulling teeth. And I'm like, bro, I'm doing the work. You and I talk about this stuff all the time. He's like, man, I don't know about doing a podcast. I ain't no people person. I ain't want to be in front of the camera. I said, look, just come on the podcast. I'm going to talk to you. You just respond like we always do. Needless to say, we did two podcasts. Those two podcasts we did, I got an overwhelming response from people talking about they now know what it is that they should be doing. And it's because they figured out what was living on the inside of them. So it's something that we stumble upon based off of the people's need. And so what I said is my podcast is designed, I want to talk about subjects. I want to talk about things that are relevant, things that are happening. And so one of the things is people just going through life now, if you decide you want to work a nine to five job, hey, no problem. Do it. Reap the benefits of it. But I do believe there's a group of people that have some other things they want to do in life. And they are tired of being tied down to a nine to five or whatever thing it is. So the best way to break from those things is to do what? Live inside of what's inside of you. He placed it in there for you to live off of it. Yes. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of the thought process of how that came up. Now, when I talked to my cousin Mm -hmm. and what he did, I took what he did naturally and I paralleled it with our faith. Mm -hmm. And when I paralleled it with our faith, I got God gave me this like two part message out of it, living on the inside, living in inside of what's living inside of you. And so the rest is history. Just it just took off. And You know, originally, we I think we were supposed to do like three, four episodes. Here we are. We're almost at 12 episodes with it. And yeah. it's because this is what the people want. They say, like, this is good. It's helping me to determine some things. It's helping me take, I know what direction. Uh, oh, I know what I should do now, yeah. right? And yeah. which for me is like, okay, God, you're going to use me to help people do that. So um, that's kind of the mindset. I know I took the long way around. Okay. And that's okay. Going. But that's, 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 that's the mindset, Miss Jackal, um, okay. behind it. And um, I said 12, but who knows? It may continue to go. Um, if people are discovering who they are yeah. and then they're walking in it, yeah. we'll, do it as, we'll do it until God says stop. Absolutely. So that's a okay. great question. Thank you for, thank you for okay. asking me. Uh, I've been getting the question off camera, if you will. Okay. No, no one has asked me that. And, but that's the mindset. Okay. That's the mindset. Um, I'm living inside of what's inside of me because of situations um, that were orchestrated, um, mm-hmm. relationships. You know, um, I think sometimes, um, a lot of times, things can be. Um, some things can't be taught, but they're better caught. Mm. Right. Okay. So, that was a word right there. Yeah, because uh, you know, we can we can come up with all these analogies and lessons and all of that. And it's great. We should do all of it. But if you mm. if you if you believe that you have a gift to build homes, design homes, remodel homes, you feel like that's what you're called to do. I could take you to a thousand seminars and and it would inspire you, but it wouldn't be nothing like me spending a week with you, taking you to where our actual builder is building a house Mm. out the the dirt. That was like something you said on the podcast I watched last night where you say, put your hand to the plow. (laughs) I thought that was so awesome. I was like, I had to rewind it. I was like, Yes, he said, put your hand to the plow. Yes. Listen, listen, I spent some time in the trade, lived there, but majority of my life, 
was in the country. And so we know what that means, putting your hands to the plow. Uh, it means some work is involved. And That's right. when you put your hands to the plow, you cannot stop until the job is done. Those men, they worked in those fields. They got the job done. They didn't go home. They didn't stop to go eat supper. They didn't stop to go. Mm -mm. They stayed out there in the field till the job was done. Yes, they and did. That's the thing that we need in this day um, in terms of us completing some things. Right. So um, as I said, we, we spent some time together earlier this year doing a podcast. Um, but did. now we find ourselves back together again, Miss Jacqueline, and you are living inside of what's inside of you. So bring the people up to speed, Miss Jacqueline, and, and tell them, um, you know, what's been going on, what, what, what it is that, that has us in this place back together. I know you're trying to contain it, but I don't want you to contain it. Go ahead. And <laughs> Uh, well, it was it's so exciting, and I appreciate yeah. you sharing it with me. And I know it's the timing, it's the timing, right? Divine the timing. timing, divine yeah. timing. Yeah. It's just orchestrated, and that's that blend and flow. And to compliment living what's on the inside, you know, yeah. because I think a lot of times we try to go against what's burning on the inside and okay. that's what takes us away from where we're supposed to be oh for sure yeah so let's see the last time we talked i think was in february it I was in february that last, yeah Absolutely. um so let's see what has happened since february 2022 i've graduated from college with my degree in business management incredible congratulations and um, I've started a book, uh, a new book. This is my second book. And this book is titled When Scratching the Surface is Not Enough. I love it. And it is just going to take you through a journey as a, as a person, as a, a professional person, uh, as maybe a, a pursuing entrepreneur. Um, I think that, and I'm, I'm in my 40s, still. <laughs> so oh, man, this, I think I can. This, wait a minute, this what, you know, this what you look like when you're in your 40s, right? Hey, um, okay, I'm proud to say I will be 49 in December. Yes, come on, sis, yes, come on, sis. yes. Come on, sis, yes. you're rocking it. Come on now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. But um, I have to say, growing up, I don't think that we were really trained or taught how to deal with pain or trauma. Right. We were kind of taught to tough it up and, you know, and, and just push through it. Right. Well, the, the only problem with that is that as we go through life and other things begin to hurt us, we just pile those things on top of each other and we right. never really deal with it. So we have broken relationships, we have broken jobs, we have broken commitments, we have um, just a brokenness on the inside. And until you come to a place in life where right. you say, okay, this stuff has not worked for me. I, I have a burning on the inside that I, I aspire and I feel it, I dream it, I think it, I talk about it, but I got all of this stuff happening, right? And what we do is we try to control every aspect of our lives and then we're not honest with ourselves. Right. So we don't deal with those pains. So when you stop fighting those things and just actually sit and take the time and do the work to get through and over those things because it's just a cycle, a system cycle that just repeats in the mind. So in this book, I talk about my experiences um, in dealing with trauma, grief, brokenness, emptiness, yes. loving yes. on empty, and yes. you know all of those things while still pursuing my entrepreneurship, while still working in the corporate America. And then I give little tidbits and little exercises for people to um, 
kind of work through for themselves. Because yeah. like you said, everyone's journey is going to be a little different. Mm-hmm. Yet the fundamental principles are still right. the same. Mm. Look, so. that is, that's, that's incredible. Um, I really hear you capitalizing on what God has given you. And yeah. that's the whole goal. Let's just get people to hey, just capitalize on what it is that God has given you, which kind of leads us in to our scripture. Well, one of the scriptures that we use to do this whole series is 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. And it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And so yes. when you think about having a treasure, treasure is something that's very precious. Um, a treasure also is a hot commodity. Um, when you think about a treasure, it's something that's been set aside, right? Um, a treasure also represents um, new beginnings. You like new beginnings. Yes. Yes. Yeah. When if you watch any movie where they're after a treasure, that treasure yes. is generationally life changing. Um, and it's intended not to be a blessing to the people who own it, but to those that are connected to it and to those that are come. So yes. when you think about God saying, but we have this treasure in mm-hmm. earthen vessels, what I love about it is it puts all of us on the same playing field. That yes. means there, there are not some people with the treasure and others without. That means God wouldn't be a just God, and he's not that God. So he right. said all of us, all yes. of us have it, right? Yes. And one of the things about a treasure is something that you guard and something that you hold dear, right? That's right. It is an so, unearned gift. It is. Oh, absolutely. Yes. That's right. It's, it's yes. something he's given to us. Yes. And um, if God went through that much to give it to us and then he invested it in the earth and tre- treasure, yes. mm-hmm. don't we owe ourselves at least to go in, open it up and see what's mm. in? I'm just don't, you at least, don't you at least owe yourself that? Yeah. To see what's in it. Yeah. And I know people go through life and they never take the time to go mm-hmm. in and find out what treasure they have. So we live true. in a society that teaches us to go after other people's treasure and not only go after it, but help them with their treasure. While yes. at, at, at length, we go through and we starve out the treasure or treasures that God has given us. Yes. So um, to hear that you are writing this book, have, have, excuse me, have written this book, to me, it's incredible. Is it surprising to me? No, it's not. Um, this is one of the things I knew that you would do. But yeah. something I found out from you the other day when we were talking, mm-hmm. you shared with me that this is not the first book project that you've been a part of, but this is the first project that is your own. Yes. So with that, I want you to share with the audience kind of um, the first project, talk about it a little bit and talk about the experience or how it impacted you being a part of it. Well, um, I would have to say that I love to read. I've always loved to read. When I was younger, my dad used to make me read the encyclopedia you remember those oh, botanicals yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes and so he used to make me read encyclopedias and and I just I've always had a little a knack for reading a book and I yeah. said as a kid one day I'm gonna write a book but you know that was just that was a, a dream a fantasy right? right but we do know dreams have a way of coming true right So my first book came at a time when I was, I was at a place of brokenness, but Mm -hmm. I was also at a place of discovering what was inside of me Um, because I had just been, you know, kind of coasting through life and helping other people with the knowledge and experience that I've gained. And I just never really had the confidence to just step out there and do it on my own right Right. so I met a lady and she was like I want you to be in this book sis you have a lot to say and you've helped me you know get through some things and 
I really want you to be a part of this book. Wow. So it was a it was a collaboration book, and it was called uh, "We're All in This Together." Okay. And it turned out to be like I think like eight of us, eight eight of us in the book, and it was just what was happening and what is your advice on the situations of you know, what's, what you're dealing with uh, for other mm-hmm. women to kind of look at and, and have an idea or have maybe a glimpse of hope to be able to get through a situation or yeah. to keep going, right? Because sometimes, you know, we get to a point where we just, you know, we're at the end of our rope and we just, I don't see it. I want to, but I just don't see it. And so that book provided different stories from different women of different backgrounds that, you know, were able to share a little bit of their story. And it was a phenomenal book. And it really helped me to to dig deeper into myself. And that was in 2018, 2019. And um, I've done a lot of work, uh, a lot of searching a lot of healing um, to get to this point, because even when we talked in February, right. I was trying to compartmentalize my thoughts and feelings around a situation that still, you know, kind of is very sensitive to me. Absolutely. Maybe not to anyone else, but it was a part of me. Right. right? And I had to find a way to, I wouldn't say get over it, right? but I had to find a way to carry that, mm-hmm. you know, as, as painful as it still may be, um, as unanswered as it, as it may be, I still had to find a way to carry it. Well, when you do that kind of work, it gets emotional. It oh, gets, it, uh, it gets draining. It, it gets overwhelming. And so I had to look for resources and tell myself that find a way. Yes. Find, yes. find a way because yeah. your natural energy is to smile, is to, to offer assistance when, when available and to be mm-hmm. there for others that may be hurting beyond your hurt. Right. right? So that just kind of brought me forward uh, from that book to this book. Uh, because I did learn that you know, I can't talk about my situation with everyone because everyone right. won't understand. Yeah. However, the pain, the trauma, the questions, right. the feelings, the thoughts, you know, that's a borderline. That's a flat line for everyone. We all mm-hmm. go through those same feelings, thoughts, and emotions when mm-hmm. we're dealing with adjustments in life. Yeah. So. I'm pretty excited about this book because I do have full control of this book. So, you know, I, I just, you know, I just said, okay, Joe, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I I asked you that for a reason. And um, there's a couple of things that I want to unpack that you said. Um, One, which I think is so incredible is, we have to learn how to cope. Like you said, it's something that's never going to go away. So mm-hmm. if it's never going away, we have to learn how to cope. Yeah. And I think that's so important. All of us, there are different things that we have to learn how to cope with. Yeah. For you, you did it through writing, right? Through yes. um, initially partnering with someone else to help their vision come to pass, being a part of it, but yeah. still... That was a way of helping, right? Yes. And the, the other thing is coping. And then the other part of it is this is for certain writers, maybe not all, but there are many of us who are authors. Writing is therapy for us, right? Yeah. So I, I want to see and show, no, not see, but I want to show how um, when you put your hands to the plow, all of that was a part of you finding out what was living on the inside of you. And you did so through, I want to make a I want to make it clear, through coping, through therapy, right? And yeah. then the last one is this one. This is the one that we we many times we fail to do. 
You did it through giving away. Yeah. It costs you something to pour something into something. Yeah. At that season. Yeah. Because it, at, at bay, if, if somebody I, um, who I'm friends with, I love, I care about, they call me and ask me for my help. I have the capacity to help them. I'm going to help them. Yes. Yes. Period. If I can yes. help them, I'm going to help them. Yes. But it's different when I'm going through a life changing event. My <laughs> ability to focus, my ability to give is construed because of the weight that I'm going through. But what I want to show is this. When you're living on the inside of what's living inside of you, I want you to know that when you decide to step out in it, it is not always going to be convenient. All the ducks won't be in a row. Everything (laughs) is just not going to line up. You're not going to have a bank full of money to do it. You're not going to have all the people Mm -hmm. you need to do it. You have to step out by faith and do it. Now, God has a way of putting us in situations to get us to the thing that's living on the inside of us. Mm. Now, you made that confession when you were younger that, hey, I'm going to write a book, right? Mm. But we don't understand and we sometimes we underestimate the power of our words. The Bible Mm. says life and death is in the power of our of what our tongue another yes. scripture says i'm going to create it's in isaiah i'll create the fruit of your lips so what we say mm. has meaning so i'm telling you now if you survey your life and you don't like it perhaps it's what you've been putting out there you need yes. to now govern your tongue watch this this is i love god is so mm. smart and he's such a just god mm. god created us this way our mouth, our tongue, and our hearts are connected. So in other words, whatever is in here is going to come out of here. So yes. if it's a bunch of hell, hell, hell coming out, you're dealing with a bunch of hell, hell, I'm going to ask you to look at your heart. Yes. Yes. That's why the Bible says, harden not your heart. Uh, so you you have to look at it. Yeah. So I, I don't want to chase the rabbit that I want to, but I'm not going to <laughs> get back to living on the inside of what's living. Yes. So yes. I'm using, I'm using, um, I'm using Jack, uh, Miss Jackie's story. Um, and what I love about it is, I promise you, there are some things in life that puncture us. Oh, God, it punctures us. And I'm telling you, it may feel and it may look like I ain't gonna never recover from this. But many times, I promise you, I, I know I'm about to lose some of you, but hear it anyway. It's through the pain of a thing, it's through the pain of situations that purpose is right behind it. So when you go through these things, painful as they are and heartbreaking mm. as they are, I want you also, you may not be able to fully grasp it. I also want you to have the mindset that as bad as my heart is bleeding and as bad as my mind is mm-hmm. about, I feel like I'm about to lose it. You better know there's some purpose somewhere around here. You got to begin to Absolutely. look for the purpose. Yes. The purpose is going to be the therapy. The purpose is going to be the the medicine the purpose is going to be the antidote that's going to get you to get over and help you cope with the thing that punctured your life absolutely Absolutely. so so it's important for you it's important for you to live inside of what's living inside of you i'll pause that because it looked like you want to say something go ahead jackie chair Mm -mm, mm -mm, no i was just Taking a deep breath and taking oh, it all taking in. in. Yeah, but that is that's what it is. So now we're gonna fast forward. Um, Jackie, Miss Jackie, and I we have this powerful podcast um, in February. We're talking about some some deep things, some touching yeah. things. But we have, yeah. and yeah. I, it, it has helped, and it's gonna continue to help so yeah. many people. Now you fast forward. Uh, February, it's August, almost to be. September. So that was what, six months ago? Yeah. Right? A so lot has happened. Ago, <laughs> that's, my, that's all my point is. What, what happens is when you're in it, when you're going through it, it seems like forever. But you mm-hmm. fast forward six months later, Miss Jackie is on a whole nother trajectory in life. 
Yeah. So, so I want to ask you something. I want to dig into some questions. Okay. Um, with this thought. Okay. Um, how how did you choose Miss Jackie? This life or the passion that you're living in right now? How did you choose it? Right. And I'm going to coin something. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not my phrase. My <laughs> sister, I interviewed her. Mm -hmm. she, when I asked her this question, she, I mean, she, rapid fire, she's like, well, the answer to that is I didn't choose this. This life chose me. Oh, my God. Oh, my that's God. What she's, that's what Go ahead. I love I'm, it. I love it. I, I love just it. have to put that. I want to put, I told her when she said it, as long as I did this particular subject, I was going to be putting her phrase out there. That's what she said. So go ahead, Miss Jack. Go ahead, Miss Jack. Well, I just want to add this before I answer the question. Okay. When you were talking about, you know, being able to work through and, and do that work and get that therapy and things like that. I know sometimes, you know, with the, I'm going to say the black and brown, we don't think that therapy is, is safe. We don't right. think that it's trustworthy. Yeah, we don't so I, I was one of those people. I was like, I didn't want those people in my business. I didn't want them talking about me. I didn't want them judging me. Right. But really they don't have the power to judge you, you know, but they do have the power to inquire and ask good questions in order for you to work through and adjust your mindset, because mm -hmm. it really, really comes down to changing your focus so you can change your life. Because we have a system, we have a system that we, we live inside of. And sometimes we can't really identify what needs to be fixed in that system. Mm -hmm. So the process becomes of how to get out of that system. Okay. How to be a catalyst for yourself to come out of that and adjust that mindset, right? To evolve and mm -hmm. to elevate your thought processing. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, it's so funny because I have, I don't think or believe I chose it. It was already destined for me to be who I am. Once I stopped trying to control every aspect of my life, the vision became clear and obtainable. I do what I love. Okay. Ooh. All right. So, all right, Miss Jackie, you want to have this conversation? Okay. <laughs> because, you know, when you think about it, if you take it back, when we were created, he mm -hmm. blew breath and life into us. Mm -hmm. So if he blew his breath and life into us, he's mm -hmm. inside of us. Mm -hmm. So I have behind me this here, like you said, watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words for they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. Watch your habits for they become character. Watch your character for it becomes destiny, mm -hmm. right? And so I look at that every day before I get ready to start my day mm -hmm. because I want to be intentional and making a connection with the people that I come across or right. the people that come across me mm -hmm. because I have found blessings in people I never met a day before in my life. Right. I was on a flight coming from Amarillo one day and this lady stopped me and I was just really feeling myself. And I think I was just walking like a goddess. You know, I was just really feeling good, but I was hurting so bad. Right. And she says, sis, you are so beautiful. Can I pray with you? And she said, man, your energy and your vibe is just, I don't know who you are. I don't know what your name is. I said, well, can I at least have your name and I'll give you mine and then we can pray. And so we stepped aside in front of this restaurant and this lady prayed with me and I was just amazed at mm -hmm. When you let down your guard, you don't have to chase blessings. Blessings mm -hmm. magnetize to you. When you ask God to bring to you what you need to fulfill his will in that day, to stay present in that day, right. it lightens the load a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. So, okay, so you go through, the, you go through this season. 
Mm-hmm. You talk about the situation that you're talking about, how you, you know, you were, you were beautiful, you were made up, you were, your energy was glowing, but you said on the inside, you were, in essence, you were broken, you were hurt. My grandmother had just passed away, like that night. And then I left like that morning and, you know, it was, it wasn't really sad, but Mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to miss her. You know, I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to lay in her lap and she'd say, tell me your troubles, baby. You Mm -hmm. know, because she would pat my head and say, just tell me your troubles. Mm -hmm. You know, and I knew I wasn't going to get that anymore, but she had a wonderful life. You know, Mm -hmm. and she was a God fearing woman and she was a giver, you know, so I I had so many joyous memories of her, but I was still hurting because I knew I was going to miss her. So traumatic situation, life changing. Uh, Here go. It's a puncture. Yeah. Um, It's a puncture that many people, um, they struggle with. Uh, Yeah. I know I do. I struggled with my mom's death for 18 years. Yeah. Like I just got found a place of solace, a place of peace with it. Yeah. And um, you know, I know God's word. I know what his word says as it relates yeah. to it. Um, I believe my mom is in a better place based off of her faith, her life, how she lived, right? Yes. But yet and still I had this hole in my life and it was so traumatic for such a long time. Yeah. So I get I get it when people um when they have the puncture, how the puncture, it, a part of their life, it just stops, right? Yeah. Now, I can also say on the other side of that, mm-hmm. because I decided to live on the inside of what was on the inside of me, it was also the thing that sustained me through not just that one traumatic experience, all the other things, the other punctures that was happening yeah. during the 18 year span. Yeah. So I'm looking at it from one side of the spectrum of me living inside of what was on the inside of me it gave me life and um it gave me a different meaning and it got me through a especially particularly that a tough tough time and yeah. got me through some tough moments versus yeah. going through those same punctures mm-hmm. and you're not being tethered to anything that's going to pull you forward see a yeah. puncture when you have a life-threatening puncture you can't mm-hmm. you can't continue to function like you did before the puncture the puncture causes you to stop. It causes you, it causes you to have to get attention to that area. So it's two things that happen. When if you suffer that type of puncture in an accident, you can go to the ER to whatever trauma center and they watch this, they can stop the bleeding. Mm-hmm. They can fix you up. But fixing stopping the bleeding is not enough because you lost so much blood that blood needs to be replenished. There it is. And you have so many people, they have Mm. gone and most, a lot of them have gotten, pretty much gotten and stopped. Mm. 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 They never gotten the bags they need to replenish it. I'm going to tell you what helps you replenish it is when you're living on the inside of what's living inside of you. Um, Remember I told you, on the other side of the puncture, on the other side of the pain is Mm -hmm. the purpose. Yes. So yeah. you're you're different and you have several different traumatic experiences. I just asked you, how did you choose the life? And in essence, you said, actually, I didn't choose it. It chose me. Mm-hmm. Now, now let me switch gears on you because yeah. now you're in a phase, um, Ms. Jacqueline, you have some traction in life. You're doing some things. Yeah. You have a focus about you. Um, and what I love about it is you have a zero excuses mentality. In other yeah. words, there are some things that I've been through. There are some choices that I made that maybe wasn't the best for me. I get that. I can even live with that. But I'm going to remove every excuse and I'm going to go get life at the level I want it. Right. Yes. Yes. So what so what about your passions wakes you up and then drives you in life? The things that you're doing, mm. you're writing books now. You got you have an entrepreneur spirit on you. You're getting ready to. You're doing some businesses now. Um, you're actually going to be in some territories that you may not have necessarily been in now that you've graduated. 
you know, from college and, yeah. uh, with your with your degree. This these are new seasons. There are some new opportunities. Like, what about these passions that wake you up, and then what about them that drive you? It's a two part question. I'm just curious to know from all of my guests. Well, the two part is. I don't want to let God down. For Ooh, one. I, that's a bar right there. It's like Two, God, God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to touch that. Go ahead. Okay. But yeah. Sometimes, you know, I just, in God's eyes, I feel like a little girl, you know. Mm -hmm. And with this renewed and refreshed spirit, you know, I think about how he's carried me, mm -hmm. you know, in times and situations where I really could not see past what was happening, right? And to know, you know, in, in hindsight, he was there the whole time. Mm. And then the second part is that I get to impact the lives of others that may be, you know, hurting and may just need to have a conversation. So I wanted to say earlier is that... Um, when you don't really trust therapy or you don't feel like that's for you, I, I created a group called uh, With Grace and Gratitude. And it's a, a support group where, you know, we just come and, and talk about, you know, what, whatever. If you want one-on-one -on -one sessions, you can call me and I'll come to you and we can just have a conversation and I could just offer my ear my knowledge or my experience, whichever is re required at that moment, because I like to stay present with the people that I interact with, because I, I have to be mindful not to compare them to anyone, you know, but to the fundamentals of, of life and the cognitive um, decision making in life, not the person to another person or to another person. It's you because there is nothing new under the sun. However, in your life, it's new, you know? So, and sometimes we don't know how to get into what, what that is. So, and I've had some good traction with that. You know, I've had some, some people that, that call, I've been referred to people, um, that just needed to have a conversation and just have a, a person to call and say, Hey, can you talk? Um, and I just, I'm just there for them because I have had many experiences in my life that were not all positive, but I've had a lot of good experiences in my life. You know, I've been able to travel some of the world, um, I've been able to, you know, meet people in different countries that, you know, are really cool mm -hmm. and they offer very good conversation because cultures are different. So people think about and do things differently. Everybody doesn't do everything the same. Right. And common sense is not common for everybody. Everybody's common sense is not the same. Mm. Okay, so you said two things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you about your passion, what wakes you up and then what drives you. Um, one of the things you said that, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to please God. That's one yeah. of the things. That's one of the things that wakes you up about your passion. Like, whatever I'm going to do today, God, I want it to be pleasing to you. And that's a good, I promise you, that's a great passion to have to want to live a life that's pleasing to God. And then yeah. you say the thing that drives you in life is wanting to be able to help people um, explicitly in the areas where um, you've experienced those punctures. And now that you're no longer on the side of um, the ER, you're on the recovery side of things. So yeah. you understand the process, you understand what that dark season looks like, you understand the nice seasons yeah. of life, but you also have experienced now what it's like to come through it and how you can turn the pain into the purpose. I get it. So that's the thing that drives you in helping other people. So now I have to go back to the book. Um, your, I love your title. It says, when scratching the surface is not enough. Um, when I hear that, 
um, most of us, we go through life just scratching the surface through life. Yeah. And um, it is, it's not enough because God is nothing about him that's a surface scratching God. You better say it. Yes. He created us. This is, I want you to think about this. You said it earlier, when God created man, he breathed life into the man, which was Adam. But we know he breathed life into mankind. Because how do we know that he never went back to the dirt again? He created him. And through him, we get the rest of us. And when you look at that scheme, so you said something that was powerful. You said when God breathed into him, God breathed himself into him, which yes. is he did. Yes. That's, how he, that's how he can tell him we're going to make man in our image yes. Yes. and in our likeness. Yes. Yes. So yes. if somebody's going to take that time and go through that type of attention to detail to create something, you better know that the thing that they created, they yes. hold it dear and they hold it in high regard. Yes. So it drives us back to the question, why wouldn't you live on the inside of what's inside of you? Mm. And, and now, even though just thinking about it, I said it out loud earlier, I said that we really hadn't taken the time to focus on how do you live on the inside? How do you discover it? I think I should because Adam, lived on the inside of what was on the inside of him. God showed Adam the potential that he had. When God bought all the animals before Adam, Adam named every single one of them. In other words, his potential is on display. In other words, when the monkey came across, he said monkey. When the giraffe come, he didn't say monkey again. He said giraffe. Mm -hmm. When the lion, lion, bear, bear, tiger, tiger. In other words, the creative power that God placed on inside mm -hmm. of him, he was able to tap into it to do something that had never been done before. Mm -hmm. Now, so you fast, forward, <laughs> you fast forward. God is giving us a picture of the potential that we have. Now, somebody said, well, that doesn't help me live inside of what's on the inside of me. Once again, like I said, when you get the puncture, that's painful. On the other side of it is what? Purpose. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to live on the inside of what's living inside of you. Just like that pain that hurts us, that comes to stop us. On the yeah. other side of this purpose, yeah. in life, when you deal with problems, on the other side of the problem is mm. the purpose. That is, is the truth. truth. That's the truth. And I'm talking to people who have been dealing with some of the same type problems for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. You are continually to deal with those type of problems is because yeah. you have been not tapped into what's living on the inside of you. The answer is on the inside of you. Yeah. So we're doing um, we're we're almost at the end of it. We okay. are doing we are doing a um, we've been on a journey. June 6th, we started um, We started 100 Days of Prayer with 100 Men. Okay. And today um, was day 80 of the journey. So wow. I'm getting a little sad because we're getting close to the end, but it's, 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 um, it's met its purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. The foundation, I, I'm going somewhere. I want you to understand living on the inside of what's inside of you. So we have a foundation text that this whole 100 days of prayer with 100 men, it stands, it's on top of it. Now watch this. In Ezekiel 22 and 30, it says this. It says, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, but I found none. The answer to the problem is in the A portion of the verse. It says, and I sought for a man among them. Watch this. Hmm. You read Ezekiel 22, the earth, the world is in a chaotic state. 
there's devastation happening, there are deplorable mm-hmm. situations, there are perishing predicaments. It is a mess. God says, I sought for a man among them. In other words, God looked at the chaos, he looked at the problem, and he looked for the answer among the problem. Why, yeah. How could God look for the answer among the problem? Because back in Genesis, he breathed himself right. into yes. Yes. So it doesn't matter how bad things happen. I don't care how many times you've been punctured. I'm telling you, because God breathed the breath of life into you, the answer you need is on the inside of you. Living, yes. listen, live inside of what's living inside of you. Now, for all of us, it looks different. Mm, yes. It looks different. Now, I could go a myriad of ways where you want to go spiritually, where you want to go naturally, where Mm -hmm. you want to go mankind. There are different levels to this meaning of what I'm talking about. If you would take the time, and I know Mm -hmm. I may be, I know I have viewers who, um, this is a faith-based podcast, a faith-based podcast. Um, I share my faith boldly, openly, but I do understand there are some who follow me, that's not their um, conviction in life. Okay. And much love to you for following and listening to us. I get it. I, hey, I respect mm-hmm. you because life is choice driven, right? Mm-hmm. And so I understand people are at different levels that watch this. So at the base level, think of this. When you become a mother mm-hmm. for the first time and you have mm-hmm. your first child, you ain't never been a mother. I don't care how many mothers you've seen do it. I don't care how many stories you've heard about what is done. Them first couple of nights where you got to get up and feed that baby, especially if you breastfeed. I'm telling you, you have to live on the inside of what God put on the inside of you as a mother. Yeah. Your mama, your mama can't even hold your hand and walk you through it. She may be able to come over and feed the baby for you and Mm -hmm. let you get some sleep and thank God for that because you need it. But at the end of the day, you're Mm going to be the one that's got to get up. You're the one that's got to learn how to put that milk on your wrist to see if it's too hot to give to the baby. You're the one got to figure out, are they crying because they teething? Are they crying because they wet? Are they crying because they done pooped? Are they crying because they sleepy? Or are they crying Mm because I done irritated them? All of that is on the inside of you. Yeah. You cannot take a class to become a mother. It's on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And we see a generation that are having kids, but they're not being mothers. Is it not because they haven't been equipped? No, they refuse to live on the inside of what's on the inside of them. That is not a trick question. It's not a a pop quiz. Mm -hmm. God asks a question and gives you the answer on the inside. So I'm talking about this thing at the most base level. You know, on whatever level you're on, you can live on the inside of what's living on the inside of you. Yeah. Remember, I told you, God, he would be he would be an unfair, unjust God if he gave me something and didn't give it to her. And we're part of his creation. Right. It would not be right. So I don't care what you've been told or what's, whatever has gotten to you first. I'm telling you, you're able to live this life at another level, but you're going to have to do it at God's prescribed way. And his prescribed yeah. way for you is to look on the inside. That's yeah. where he put it. Yeah. That's where he put it. Think about this. Yeah. He could have put your heart in your arm. He could have put your heart in your jaw. He could have put right. it in your forehead. Think about why he, think about the place. He, he put it in your chest cavity, one of the toughest places on your body. Mm-hmm. Then there's some skeletal and some stuff that protects it. Mm-hmm. In other words, I'm going to put your heart in a place that's so near and dear to put a protect, to protect it. It serves as a protection, right? So is it your purpose. I'm going to put it in a place that you have to go look within to get it, right? Yeah. So um, that's part of the makeup of who we are. So Amazing. those of you that, that are listening and saying, hey, I don't know how. Yes, you do. Just like you have that, it's something God put in you as a mother. It's some stuff that God put in me as a father that I don't care what the world says. Uh, There are some things I know that I I have to do as a father. I know there are some things that my wife and my kids are depending on me to do. 
as yeah. a father. I don't need nobody to coach me or teach me on it. I depend on, I live on the inside of what's on the inside of me. And this yeah. is crazy. I didn't, the father that I am, I didn't even have that type of father. Amazing. So no, every, you can remove every excuse. So yep. I, I'm, I want to challenge you. Look inside. And now let me say this. God will use people. He will give you role models. He will give you examples to see, but you still got to have to tap on the inside to find out yeah. what's uniquely for you. Right. Yeah. Oh, so I, I want to go. Did you want to sh- add something to that, Jacqueline? No. Uh-uh. No, I think um, you're you're hitting the nail on the head. Um, I um, I was talking to a client a uh, day before yesterday, and I told them to imagine a styrofoam cup okay. and fill it with water. Okay. Almost simultaneous, just almost exact what you're saying about that puncture. But imagine a styrofoam cup. You fill it up with water. Yeah. Life happens. Health happens, mm-hmm. family happens, mm-hmm. everything happens. And so there's a little stream of water coming out of that cup. Mm-hmm. So what's most important is that you continue to fill that cup. And we forget that because we've been trained to put everything before ourselves, to not take care of ourselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. get exercise, yeah, eat a balanced diet. But what about the mental stimulation what about the things that you're listening to? What about the things that you're saying? Mm-hmm. Right? What are you putting in your cup? You have to fill that cup mm-hmm. continuously so that you can give more, so that you can be more. And mm-hmm. those punctures, if not continuously fed in that cup, those punctures, they just run out. They just keep running and they never get healed. They never get properly tended to. So it's very important, like you yeah. said, to, to make sure that we take care of ourselves. Yeah. We have to. Now, I do want to say this about puncture. Life has a way of puncturing you. But I will tell you this. There are certain punctures that need life or death um, attention. Immediate. Um, uh, I've been punctured in my leg. I've been punctured in my leg several times. I've been punctured in my arms mm-hmm. on different occasions. Um, I've been punctured, punctured in my neck, right? All of them were pretty serious. Yeah. But none of them compared to my heart being punctured yeah. or my lungs being punctured or my kidney. Yeah. yeah. If those get punctured, mm. they need immediate attention. Immediate. And there are some life and death things that um, if they don't get the attention, eventually that person is going to die. Now, there is a such thing as you living, but living as the walking dead. Mm. And if I were you, if I was, if I'm living a life as the walking dead, I would decree and declare like this day will be the last day that I'm going to exist and then be living as the walking dead. That's a whole other podcast, Harry. Yeah, even you know, <laughs> listen, Think about it. You, the fact that you still have breath in your body means you still have purpose attached. That it still is. means what you have, somebody else could benefit from. Yeah. We both, we both, I didn't share mine yet, but you, uh, before you wrote your book, you were part of another book. And I think we'll kind of, I think we'll kind of end here with this. Um, you were a part of another person's book project. Mm -hmm. They ask you for input. Um, They ask you for ideas to go. And it wasn't just you. It was like you said, seven or eight other ladies. Mm -hmm. The key is it wasn't wasn't your idea and it wasn't your project, but you were entrusted to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. I have the same story. I hadn't even thought about being no author. I hadn't even started my own um, youth mentorship program. But I thank God for bringing people into my life that saw things in me before I even saw them in myself. So my my cousin, shout out Robert Murray. um, At the time, he had um, 
his mentorship program called Stats. And he was actively pursuing it. And like I said, I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't even have You Can't Stop This Blaze yet. It hadn't even been birthed. And um, I remember him telling me that he said, man, God showed me, man, that you're going to be a part of my program. And this is why you're going to be a part of it. And he went on to explain to me how I could support him and how he saw me fitting into it. And I agree with him. I'm like, you see me doing that for your program. I agree. That's one of the things God's called me to do. So he he activated it. He did it about my long, and I, I was able to participate at that level. This is what's powerful. So some years later, like, yo, I'm writing this book, and I want you to be in the book. I'm saying to myself, I don't even know what I want to write. I ain't even thought about it. So he gave me the concept. The name of the book is um, A Letter to My Younger Self. Ooh. And so he did what he got a collaboration of men. I think it might be eight of us that's in his okay. book. Mm -hmm. And we all wrote a chapter. We wrote a letter to our younger self. Mm -hmm. So I ended up writing something that I had. He ended up putting it in the book and still not even knowing that I would have my own book. That's, that's not the point. What I want, what I want to show you, show people is we're talking about living on the inside of what's living on the inside of you. God knew the things that I would be doing and the things how I would be touching. God made sure that I had exposure to it at a level that I could touch it, feel it. So when I needed to dig in yes. to find out what was living on the inside of me. I have already had touched it. Now, remember I told you, you, you can't, you, your mother can't necessarily be a mother for you, but you better know all those years of you playing with the baby doll, you playing house, <laughs> you plaiting that baby doll's hair. <laughs> you understand? Yes. I promise you, as the kids say today, there's some muscle memory that goes along with that. Well, there's a spiritual muscle memory that goes along when you can, when you are engaged at that level. So for many of you, going back to finding out what's on the inside of you, I'm going to ask you to help somebody do something that they're passionate about. This is another way you can find out what's on the inside of you. Do it, be faithful to it, and be open to hear of what God will show you. And through it, God will show you. That's, and you'll be like, ah, the light will go off. Ah, there it is. Mm -hmm. I, I know I've been dealing with, but that's I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so Miss Jacqueline, being a part of that project, look at her now. She's she's getting ready to release this book. She got plenty of other books she's gonna write. But oh. you think of but you think about what her exposure level to being in that, and watch this. She had to trust while trembling in a time where she had been punctured like never before. Yes. But on the other yes. side of it was the purpose. And so I know it's painful. And I know we talked, we talked about a lot of stuff on today's episode. Yes. But I'm gonna encourage you to go back. I just want you to listen. And um, it may seem like I was chasing a rabbit all over the place, but when you go back and listen and if you look at how I pieced this together. And you hear what Miss Jacqueline said and what I said, you'll understand why we're spending this time talking about living on the inside of what's inside of you. Don't waste another day. Don't waste another season. Don't waste another moment. I promise you, not just for you, somebody needs what you have. And Miss Jacqueline, you, um, obviously I want you to share with people. Uh, you sent a text to me that's incredible. I think everybody should have that opportunity to try to jump on that. So um, I want you to take this time to kind of share, not kind of, but share with people where can they get this book that's about to come out? Also, you shared about your help group. If you could share the information that may be someone listening and looking for something like that, mm -hmm. that's it. that may be looking for something like that, um, share your information, how people can, can get the book, how they can touch you, 
or okay. you know, it may not necessarily be you that they end up touching, but you may be able to point them in a the direction where they can get the touch that they need. Um, I definitely believe in connecting us, um, and it may be just be something very beneficial for someone. So, could you share that information, Ms. Jacqueline? Well, it will be my pleasure. So, uh, I want to give a shout out to Stephanie Allen. She was the the powerhouse to uh, begin that collaboration work. And she is an amazing awesome. woman. Awesome. But uh, to get in touch with me, you can text or call 256-677-6128. And you can tell me what it is you need. You want the book? Text, I want the book. You want to talk? I want to talk. We'll schedule a time. You'll get a link where you'll be able to pre-order. The pre-orders are going until the, mm, I think September the 16th is the last day for pre-orders. And then it'll go to edit and then it'll be ready uh, for publish. So we're really trying to push the book and get it out before Thanksgiving. Um, but just depending on, you know, where I fall in their editing process or whatever. But um that's how you can get the book. And uh, if you pre-order, you have an opportunity to be entered into a drawing for four prizes, a 45-inch smart TV, a terabyte external storage, a $50 gift card, and a $100 gift card. And of course, you'll be mentioned in the book forever. If you'd like to sponsor a chapter, just hit me up, 256-677-6128, and we can talk about it, and I can send you the information and um, get your information and make sure that you're a part of, of something that's going to help impact lives uh, for change. And so I'm, I'm super duper excited. The website is being currently kind of revamped because yeah. I, I realized that it needed to go into multiple different directions, but it has to be navigated properly. So mm -hmm. with that being said, all the information will be future on, um, on the website. But for now, this number is the best way to get in touch with me. Incredible. Give that number yes. one more time. One more 256-677-6128. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Love it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, those Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely, sis. Absolutely. Um, we believe in um, supporting um, people's dreams. Um, I know this is just part of the, some of the things that you're going to be doing. Um, and I hope on this um, New Balance podcast and on this New Balance journey that we're going on, I hope I model what partnerships look like. Um, so many times we make it so hard to partner, to be partners with each other. Um, yeah. The criteria, the criteria to be partners, to be honest, is, uh, is unachievable. Yeah. Nobody can line up with all of those things that people are requiring. So when I look at people and I look at man's requirements, and then I look over and I look at God's requirements, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to choose God every time. And I yes. told God, I was like, hey, God, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to live a life pleasing to you. I'm looking to be rocking with you. So, God, I want to rock with people who are mm -hmm. rocking with you. And uh, I'm yeah. cool with where I am in life. You know, hey, um, it don't take a lot to move the needle over here. Um, but we do know that there is a group of people who want what we have. And so we're, we're eager to meet with them connect with them so we can move the needle to what God designed for us. I get it. It's not for everybody. And, Excuse me. Um, and, and that's, a, that's a cool thing. But for those that it is for, listen, we're, we are looking to connect with you and move the needle um, so that you and your family and everything that's connected to you can be in the place that God desires for it to be. Man, um, hey. New Balance Podcast, show some love for my sister, Miss Jacqueline Brown, one more time. This is incredible, Miss Jackie. Um, I thought um, that today, always, I always learn from my guests, always learn. Mm. And then I get to hear more about your story that I didn't know. And so it just gives so much more relevance to what you're doing, what God is doing in your life. And you can learn a lot when you hear people's story, what they've been through, 
what God is doing. And I, I just made up in my mind in this season of my life, not just me, but my wife, our family, not only are we going to support people, but we're going to be people's cheerleaders. I think we have to get back to where we're cheering and rooting for each other again. Yeah. And um, last I checked, it's about 8 billion people on the planet. So there's more than enough to go around. I ain't got to hate on my sister. I ain't got to put her down to make myself look big and all that. No, man, let's support one another. Yeah. And, um, let's, let's, um, let's all go up together, right? Let's go yeah. up together. Um, and if your family's good and my family's good, I consider that a good day, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We're just thankful. We're thankful for, for our just good, wholesome relationships. And um, we wish you the best. We pray and, um, that, that the bookstores can keep up with the demand. We pray that the online sales, that you set them on fire. Yes. Um, and y'all stay tuned. <laughs> um, when yeah. I say stay tuned, y'all see this face. You, I ain't gonna put a business out there, but get used to. <laughs> I'll say this: get used to seeing her face. I'm. I'll leave it right there. She, you see, she's laughing. Mm-hmm. Man, she know why she's laughing. But I'm um, grateful. grateful. Absolutely, yeah. Get yeah. used to seeing her face. And podcast. Listen, I love you guys. We'll see you next week on the next episode. And as we always say before we get out of here, it's strength for today, sustenance for tomorrow. It's your boy, H2O, your potential conditioner. We love you and we'll see you next time. Peace.